I'm Tad Stones, the creator of The Terror That Flaps in the Night, The Troll That Haunts the Tweets of Crime, The Rick Roll of Justice, and The Viral Takedown of Villainy, and you are listening to The St. Canard Files, a Darkwing Duck podcast. Ooh. Get dangerous. Welcome to the St. Canard Files, the Dark Winged Up podcast. I'm your host, Will Santana, and I am Mike Russo, and it could come in handy someday. Someday. Maybe. Someday. Maybe. <laughs> What's going on, Mike? Um, I'm good. How are you doing, Will? Uh, I'm good, man. Just uh I'm about to be off for eleven days in a row. Yeah. <laughs> I've been off for the last ten weeks. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> No, no, not lucky me. Well, yeah, I'll, not lucky you for financial reasons, but... <laughs> at least what... Well, I'm still getting paid. I just haven't been going to work. It's the weirdest thing. I mean, it's 10 weeks as we're recording this. Mm-hmm. Um, it will be longer. I will be out... Of, I'll be not going to work at least till the end of June. Um, but luckily, I'm still getting paid. What happens in the summer is totally up in the air. Um, I have to do some work from home. Not a lot. But, you know, it's been all right. I haven't gone insane the way I thought I would be. Luckily, this podcast keeps me busy. Rewatching Darkwing, going live, doing stuff for the Facebook group. You know, that's that's been a nice little side project to do. Um, but I, I'm really waiting for all this to end, but I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. But let's not get too negative about it. Well, I mean, uh, I take it back. Lucky you. You still getting paid, too? Shoot. I wish yeah. I was getting all the time all getting paid. <laughs> I still got to get up and work. <laughs> It was fun for the first couple of weeks when we had puzzles out and my wife wasn't working from home yet. But now that she has to work from home several hours every day and my daughter has all the schoolwork to do, there is a bit more of a routine to our days. Mm -hmm. But after 10 weeks, I I just want I just want to get out and see friends and do something, you know. Mm -hmm. And my birthday is a couple of days from from today. I'm recording this on May 20th, I believe. And my birthday is in a few days. We won't get to do it. We won't get to go and do anything, but you know we'll celebrate. It's okay. something. Okay, so Mike, man, the people who are tuning in for the first time, where can they find us at, man? Uh, lots of different podcast apps. You have so many places to find us. It's it's great. We're out there. We're on Stitcher, Spotify, um, iTunes, Google Play, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, oh, lots of other uh, podcast apps. Um, you can ask your Amazon Echo to play the newest episode. It'll do that for you. We're on uh, iHeartRadio and Pandora, and we're also on YouTube. And also, of course, on YouTube, we post uh, videos. Uh, We make videos. We find interesting Darkwing commercials and other types of videos that we post. Definitely subscribe to our YouTube page. Mm, Okay, okay. All right, well, I got a couple of shout-outs, Mike. Uh, I want to give out three shout-outs. They're all going to be YouTube today. Uh, awesome. I want to give out one to Maria Montana. She, I think she's new to our page. She's been very, uh, com- she's been commenting a lot as of lately, and I could tell she's new because her first comment was on Darkly Dawn's the Duck episode and that sinking feeling. So she's way back there at the beginning. And mm-hmm. then um, I also want to give a shout out to Shan Ryder. Uh, not sure if it's male or, fe- or female, but uh, Shan. Had, I think they're also new, but because they're jumping around. I saw them commenting on newer stuff, older stuff in the middle of the pack, back right. to newer stuff. So I think they're jumping around, which is fine, you know. That's fine. You pick your favorite episodes. Yeah. And then my last shout out, uh, I've shouted out this person before, but now I know their name. So and this person has been very cool with us. She has joined. She's part of our family now. on say can our file T- Tiffany Silver Braun, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's cool. Yeah, man, I screwed up her name last time, though, when I didn't know her government name. 
<laughs> yeah, we had her on recently. We did a live discussion about Liquidator. She's a big Liquidator fan, and she's mm. a phenomenal. She's a phen- <laughs> she's a phenomenal <laughs> artist too. Now I love Liquidator, but he's no QJ. I'm sorry, QJ is still number one, baby. Yeah, yeah that's well, for you, Owen, and for you, uh, Tiffany. QJ's mm-hmm. number one. <laughs> and um, of course, you can also find our community on Facebook, Instagram, and mm-hmm. Twitter. The Saint Canard Files of Darkwing Duck podcast. So there are lots of communities you can be a part of. If you don't like Facebook, we're we're on Instagram. If you don't like Instagram, we're on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Or you can join all three if that's what you feel like doing. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Mike, what episode are we doing today, man? We are doing the secret origins of Darkwing Duck. And how do you feel about the episode without really explaining? I like it. You do? Um, it's it's not a top tier episode. It's not one I go back to all the time, but I enjoy it when I watch it. Okay. Uh, I don't we're, know. We're uh, divided, I guess, aren't we? No, I don't hate it. Well, we're, we're a little divided because a little bit. I'm more on the dislike than liking side. Uh, I do like certain things about it. There's certain jokes, but for continuity, it's not a go-to episode. We'll, we'll get into that stuff later, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not a true origin story or nothing. It, it pokes at, you know, some well, inspiration here and there. You know? According to Tad Stone's, no origin story of Darkwing is a true origin story. <laughs> but, but this one is completely insane. This one's its own thing entirely. Okay, uh, before we get into the episode, do, because this episode has several references um what what are your ties to superman um i'm not a huge superman fan i never have been Mm -hmm. um i gravitate a bit more toward batman but i will say up front i'm not a big comic book fan i don't read comics usually unless it's something like darkwing um i know the i know the superhero characters more through uh tv shows and movies I'll, okay. I mean, I'll out myself right away with that kind of thing. Um, I'm more familiar with Batman through the Tim Burton films, the animated series, mm-hmm. and the Marvel stuff. It's definitely more through the MCU okay. than anything else. So that's where I'm more familiar with superheroes. For me, I'm not a comic book person, so I don't want to disrespect any of the comic book fans and stuff. You know, uh, I got my buddies that are hardcore Marvel and DC fans of comics and stuff, mm-hmm. and they know that my knowledge of uh, the comics and stuff is very limited. So they understand why I enjoyed the Marvel films and some of the DC stuff, uh, because I don't know the origin of the comics, you know? Yeah. As, as far as Superman goes, my knowledge of Superman is only with the Christopher Reeve movies, uh, that terrible Superman return movie, man, oh. is, man of steel. I like and dislike, um, Batman versus Superman. I was not a fan of that film. I, I did like Wonder Woman in that movie, though. Yeah, I really haven't seen a lot of the DC films. I'm a lot. I'm a lot more familiar with the Marvel stuff. The DC. The DC stuff. My, I. My favorites were Bat, Batman the Animated Series, stuff like that. Okay. Now, this episode it definitely obviously it references Superman a lot, quite a bit, oh, yeah. especially at the beginning. Uh, you you reached out to the writer of this episode, didn't you? Yes, I did, because I had heard um, that bits of this episode were inspired by the 1972 um, John Carradine uh, series, Kung Fu. But, mm-hmm. you know, that's not complete. That's that, who knows if that's truly right, you know? Mm-hmm. People just speculating. So I did reach out to John Stranod, the writer of this episode, and I asked him. He said he isn't 100% sure because it's been a long time, but he, is, but he is pretty sure it was likely he did use that show, Kung Fu, mm-hmm. as as some inspiration to the whole monastery thing. And then he pulled one out that I was, I was, I would never would have guessed um, Dr. Strange origin, mm-hmm. which now that, now that I think about the Dr. Strange movie from the MCU, bam, I totally see it. I see it too. I think a little bit came for Batman. I know you disagree with that and he didn't, co- he didn't confirm it. I'm, I'm this is just my opinion. I'm just throwing it out there, but I do think one scene also has Batman with the uh, league of shadows. That's just my opinion. Guys don't attack yeah. me. I'm well, not a I'm comic sh- book guy. <laughs> I'm sure there's a little bit of super Batman in there, but we also always have to remember a lot of the, the story editors and writers for dark wing were inspired by silver age comics. That's mm-hmm. where a lot, of, especially Tad Stone stuff from like the sixties. All right, so let's go ahead. A lot of the stuff comes from. Uh, Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this, Mike. Uh, Let's name the episode and tell us our production air date order. 
Okay, again, the secret origins of Darkwing Duck. Uh, the original air date was Wednesday, November 13th, 1991. And it was 52nd in production order. So pretty deep. Um, the only one we've done that was later was When Aliens Collide. Mm -hmm. um, but this one definitely feels like it's a later one because I, I get the impression they were so comfortable with the characters. They could write an insane story like this that's totally out of continuity because they're comfortable enough to do something that insane. Mm -hmm. um, also, this is our fifth episode in production order, at least, with the new version of Negaduck. The new version, the one we're most familiar with, I should say. Um, even though we haven't seen them since Justice Ducks. But is this really Negaduck? I ha I'll have more to say about that when he shows oh, up okay. in the episode. Okay, I just wanted to throw that out there at the beginning, since you mentioned I will, it. <laughs> I will say it's nice to see him again. It's been a long time since we've actually seen him in an episode. We're going to get a whole bunch of Negaduck episodes soon, though. A whole bunch of Negaduck shows. Mm -hmm. um, so our story editor this time around was Carter Crocker. Again, this is one of his shows. And like I said, the writer was Jan Stranod, one of very few he did. As you might recall, he wrote Days of Blunder with your boy Quacker Jack. Yeah. And he got story credit on Darkly Dawn's a Duck. And later on, we'll see him in Twin Beaks. Okay. And the animation was by Sun Wu. Um, the characters look fine. There's some crazy stuff later in the episode I'll point out. But nothing spectacular. I don't know if you could think of any scenes where you were really impressed. But I think that's just Sun Wu at this point. This is their MO. Sun Wu. Sun Wu, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, any scenes you could think of that you were truly impressed by, or is this just typical Sun Wu for you? Nothing really impressive. The only one that kind of stood out was uh, when he was in the desert. Yeah, okay, I can see that. that that's about that. it. But nothing, like nothing. I said, it didn't really like poke out to me, but I was no. like, hey, that looks pretty good right there, you know? Yeah. There okay, is one but let's scene I'll point. There's one scene I'll point out that's not good, but it's it's. I'll point it out because it's pretty weird. Oh. But we'll get to that later. Anyway, <laughs> let's start our episode. All right, we got. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Mike. We got Gosseloid and Honkulon. Gosseloid and Honkulon. Yes. Okay. This <laughs> the framing device of this episode. The narr narrative part takes place 200 years in the future. All right, so we got G Gosseloid and Honkulon. They're in a future museum where. Darkwing is just a myth. There's mm -hmm. no facts. And he he's a myth from a cartoon series. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he, was a, um, he was a myth. He was a mythological hero. And there are artifacts in the museum from the cartoon series based on his mythic exploits. Yeah, and Gosseloy <laughs> believes in the myth and Honkulon doesn't. Yeah, Honkulon. We can just call him Gaz and Honk. It's all right. We don't have all to use right. full names. Or just okay. Gazan and Honker, because that's exactly who they are. <laughs> uh, characterizations, voices, and everything. It's Gazan and Honker. Um, really quick, though, we do get a museum tour guide at the beginning of the episode. Um, very kind of Jetsons-y in design. This whole like framing device reminds me of the Jetsons with the backgrounds and the way the sound effects and everything. Um, I'm not sure who voiced him, because... He doesn't have a voice in IMDb, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure there's only one other male voice actor in the cast besides Jim and Terry, and that would be a voice actor by the name of Rene Aubergenois. Mm -hmm. Try saying that three times fast. No. Um, <laughs> an actor who's well known for um, acting in shows such as Benson, Deep Space Nine, and Boston Legal. Um, he was an actor, singer, voice artist, director. You know, he was very, very, um, very widespread career. In terms of animation, I think Disney fans might know him best as the crazy chef Louie from Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. And um, he definitely did another character later in this episode. I'm just not sure if he did this one. And we actually lost him in December of 2019 at oh. the age of 79. Damn. Very, pro very prolific actor. It's always sad when we get to someone who's passed on. Yeah. And um, so, yes, yeah, so we have a museum tour guide and keep going. We'll take us take it away from here. All right. So he's uh, doing the tour and, you know, Goss and Haunt, they kind of wander off from the tour and they find we find the chairs from the living room where, mm -hmm. you know, of, of Drake's house and they accidentally spin on the chairs and they're lost for seven hours, Mike. They get stuck inside the display. Yeah. Yeah. They're lost. And then a custodian or janitor pops up. He's cleaning up. And he touches the, the Basil statue, right? The Basil statue, yes. yes yeah. Yes. And they pop back up. 
Okay, two <laughs> things I want to mention quick. This is another instance of a living mop. Very Fantasia, isn't it? Yeah, very Fantasia. And um, we have to give a huge shout out to Jim Cummings for this episode. He's everywhere. Because he <laughs> does he does Darkwing at at least three different ages in this mm-hmm. episode. He does Negaduck, Herb, Darkwing's dad, and Negaduck's dad. So technically, he does five distinct characters and one of them different ages. Mm-hmm. He is this is a tour de force for Jim. Um, tell us a bit about the janitor, Will. It's got to be Drake. <laughs> yeah, he looks like Drake. He's got some big bushy eyebrows, but um, I think yeah. it's an old. He's he's older. Jim is doing the voice much much older, but it's it's definitely Drake. He looks familiar, doesn't he? Yeah. So he you know he begins to tell them a story about Darkwing, you know, and Goss is she's all interested. She's into it. Honky, he's quite not there yet. Little detail that comes back at the very end, Honk is got some, you know, his allergies are acting up, and the janitor gives him a purple handkerchief. Yeah. Yeah. Which will come in handy at the end, though. Because the uh, museum tour guide points out that the only part of the costume they were never able to find from the TV show was... Uh, Let's hold off on that. Oh, no problem. We'll hold off on that. Yeah, let's hold off on that. (laughs) <laughs> but Conker argues that if Darkwing Duck was real, there'd been some record of him, like a birth certificate or something. Yeah, Hunk's not feeling it, uh, feeling this at all. He's not. No. Mm-hmm. But so, so the this old janitor decides he's making this up as he goes along. You know he is. Oh that yeah. The reason why there was no, the reason why there was no birth certificate is that he wasn't born on this planet. Nope. Another there planet. You go. <laughs> what was so, the name so, of the planet? The name of the planet, which might sound familiar to you Superman fans, is Zipton. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it called Zipton? Uh, Krypton? Zipton, <laughs> Krypton, hmm. An interesting visual touch to this planet. The planet is a giant cabbage, and all the buildings are fruits and vegetables. <laughs> I didn't I even notice that. <laughs> I don't know why, um, but whatever. Um, it's this weird Disney thing when out of space, all the things are fruits and cabbages. We had that in When Aliens Collide, remember? Mm-hmm. And then there was the vegetable planet from that DuckTales episode, too. Um, but anyway, so yeah, this is a whole Superman parody, isn't it? Yeah, so Zipton is coming to the end of the world. The, the boulders, the planet's falling apart, and uh, we meet Drakel. Drakel, wait a minute. That's another reference to Superman, isn't it? it gotta be. <laughs> oh. Superman's dad was named Jarrell, mm-hmm. and now his Darkwing's dad's named Drake L. But the reference goes even deeper than that. Jim is doing a Marlon Brando impression for Darkwing's dad. <laughs> and he's doing that because Marlon Brando played Jarrell in the first Christopher Reeve Superman movie. Mm-hmm. So there's a reference within a reference here. Yep. Uh, so the planet is starting to blow up, and Drake L blames his, his stupid brother who wants to take over the world. Yeah. yeah, he built a bomb capable of destroying the whole planet. And his wife, Darkwing's mom, she's actually, we have to mention one, one other voice actress. Her name was Zelda Rubenstein. She was an actress and human rights activist. She was, in the, she was from the Poltergeist series and the TV series Picket Fences. She only did this one Disney role. This was her only Disney thing, this, this character. Um... She was notable for being a, um, a short actress. She had a pituitary de- deficiency. Um, just interesting to throw it out there. But she also passed away in 2010 at the age of 76. Mm-hmm. So rest in peace. Um, and it's funny, though. Drake's mom said, he didn't use it, did he? And he's like, no. And, Dr- and Darkwing's dad's like, no, there was an accident with a detonator. <laughs> Joke that pays off. So what do they decide to do with their baby? They give him a gas gun. <laughs> he, he calls it an Omni Blaster, and mm. it starts a running gag that he gives it to his son and says it could come in handy someday. Mm-hmm. And that's a running gag. So they decide to put the baby in a spaceship and rocket him off to a planet called Gribble Fritz. Gribble Fritz. <laughs> I, I don't know what that's a reference or a parody of. Maybe it's just a funny name. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, the other side of town, they say, living in a giant giant garlic is Negaduck's mom and dad. Is it Negaduck though? Uh, they never... I know, I keep calling him Negaduck. It's, uh. it's, it's, the, it's the evil brother of Drake L. Mm-hmm. And it turns out he didn't, he didn't set the bomb. 
his idiot brother sat on the detonator. <laughs> <laughs> and um and of course, um his wife is also voiced by Zelda Rubenstein. They all want to get on the spaceship. There's only room for one of them and they're fighting amongst each other to get on it. And I, I and the, the dad is voiced by Jim in Negaduck's voice. Mm -hmm. And he gets a great line though. He says, "So long. It was a nice marriage. Hate to see it end this way." Uh, <laughs> And the baby knocks them both away, gets in the rocket, and flies off. Mm -hmm. So the two babies are in outer space now, and they're twin spaceships. Yep. And then we go back to uh, Honk. Mm hmm Yeah, Honk can't find any info on the this other planet. He's he's researching this like crazy. He wants proof. He wants evidence. He doesn't believe any of this stuff. And then uh, Gosselin comes to the custodian or janitor's story. She's, like, defending him hardcore, you know? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And and again, the janitor is, like I said, he's clearly making this up. And he says, well, there was no record of Gri Gribble Fritz because he never made it to Gribble Fritz. <laughs> um, the two spaceships collide, and baby Darkwing ends up on Earth. Yep, at a monastery. This is where the Kung Fu references start, the Kung Fu uh, television series, and of course also the um, Doctor Strange stuff. Mm -hmm. Um so he is taken in by the um, the head of the monastery, the Venerable One. Also the Sensei. As, the Sensei, also known as Veni. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and this is when you see um, Darkwing a little bit more grown up, and Jim is doing him with like a, a kind of a kiddish kind of voice. Yeah. Not as, not <laughs> as, yeah, not as like high as baby Dr as little Drakey from Paradox, but still, he has this little kid voice. Yeah, he kind of gives it like a wimpy's voice, too, like a wimp's voice. Yeah, also what I don't I don't know the intent, but a lot of Darkwing's dialogue is very like he comes off as a wuss, mm -hmm. you know, definitely like very innocent and naive. Um, but they also name him Stinky because his diaper was loaded when he landed. Yeah. So they call him Stinky and he's a he he doesn't fit in with the monks. He's a freeloader, you know, and, and every time he um he gets out of line, um the sensei smacks him on the beak with his cane. <laughs> that becomes a running gag too. Yeah, so he, he gets his training and stuff with the monastery, and it's time for him to go, though, Mike. And he's told, you know, remember what you've learned. It could come in handy someday. <laughs> yeah, so he leaves, and he has to go through the desert, and who does he come across? Well, I want to point out one gag I like. He starts to walk into the desert, and right in front of him is a is, is St. Canard, right across the water. The modern-day St. Canard. And Goslin goes... Is this where he found St. Canard? And the janitor goes, mm, not quite. And then, like, a curtain drops, and it's more desert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so he meets somebody. Um, a great, great little cameo by uh, Herb Muddlefoot. But Who is he Herb? Herb? No, but it's, it's still Herb, but he's it's a Herb, genie. Yeah. He's a genie. Um, and he, you know, he's he doesn't want to give, you know, baby, you know, young Darkwing uh, his wishes but then Darkwing bests him in a combat, and he gives in, gives him his wishes. What were the Do three you... wishes, Mike? Okay, his three wishes were um, a Cuckoo Cola, which, remember Cuckoo Cola? That was a Rescue Rangers thing. Mm -hmm. um, some, de snazzy, some snazzy new threads, and the secret to that smoking entrance of yours. <laughs> so he gets his three wishes at once. He shows up with a can of soda, a purple jacket, the blue... The blue um, uh, turtleneck and the hat. But yeah, the, and I was gonna say the threads is missing some, missing two items. Two items, yes. He's not totally wearing what we're used to, and now he can disappear and reappear in a puff of smoke, literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, of course, Herb the genie says, "You take care how you use this. It could come in handy someday." That keeps coming back. <laughs> yep. And Herb leaves. Herb the genie leaves without you know helping you know Darkwing mm -hmm. out. He's still lost in the desert. Yeah, he's, all he's got is that Coca Cola. <laughs> so that's the end of Act One. When we come back, the janitor's still narrating the story, and <laughs> Goslin goes, "Aren't you forgetting something?" And Honk says, "Yeah, like telling a story that makes sense." <laughs> yeah, she wants to know about that other baby. <laughs> and then the janitor goes, "Other baby? There wasn't any other baby, because he's making it up. He just forgot all about it." Yep. <laughs> So what did happen to the baby? The uh, the baby was picked up by space pirates. <laughs> and, you know, more or less, who would the baby grow up to be? Yeah. 
I don't want to call him Nega Duck. To me, he's not Nega Duck, Mike. You can call him, but I'm, I'm not he, going to. I mean, he looks like Nega Duck. He talks he's like Nega Duck. Nobody calls him Nega Duck. Mm-hmm. They just I mean, call him the evil cousin the whole time. Yeah, the evil cousin. Um, <laughs> he has a cool spaceship, though. You know, oh, yeah. it's got Nega Duck colors and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, he sees Darkwing. You know, obviously, he is not called Darkwing yet. It's just easier shorthand. He's still named Stinky. Mm-hmm. Um, he sees Darkwing in the desert, beams him on board, and makes him an offer to join him in ruling the galaxy. Um, Darkwing won't do it, so as quick as we've seen Negaduck, his scene's over already. He dumps Darkwing back out of the ship. Yep. I he really land, what does he land on, though? He lands on the Thunderquack. <laughs> and LP's and, finally here. In every universe, launch pad's just launch pad. Mm-hmm. But um, he's with somebody. Yeah, we got a new character, Mike. The, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Mysterious Mask Avenger of Evil. Who is the Mysterious Mask Avenger of Evil? I don't know. She kind of sounds like Christine Cavanaugh. Who who could that be? <laughs> oh, it's Goslin. <laughs> she is the Mysterious Mask Avenger of Evil. Yep. Um, so they land, and Myster- the Mask Avenger goes, Who are you and what is your origin? Um, so Darkwing tells them his origin, puts them to sleep in the process. And they decide to take him back to their hideout because mm-hmm. they have to stop the evil brother before he takes over the world. So the hideout, of course, is in the bridge, just like what we're used to. Yep. But then when Darkwing pulls out the Cuckoo Cola, we learn the Master Avenger's weakness. That's her kryptonite. That's her <laughs> kryptonite, yeah. And, you know, she says one sip, she could stick to her stomach. Another sip, she could get a splitting migraine in it. The entire can, that's it. She's, she's done for. Mm-hmm. Of course, we that that does that does come back later. Um, so she decides to help out little uh, little Stinky by giving him a new name. What name did she come up for him? I can't remember. It wasn't Darkwing yet, was it? No, it's Darkwing Duck. Oh, she didn't re- she didn't name him Darkwing already. Okay, she does name him Darkwing Duck. But he doesn't know what it means. <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, what does it mean? She's like, what does it matter? Yeah. And then um. You know, the evil cousin shows up and they have to go fight him. And then this is my favorite part of the episode, as lame as it is. She tells Darkwing he has to look dangerous. And she goes like, grrr. And then Darkwing goes, you mean like this? Who went? And he does this really <laughs> lame, like little thing with his arms. Mm-hmm. And she's like, eh. but just the animation of him going, who went? It's, just, it's, it's, it's lame, but it's funny. Yeah. So she gives, she gives him the mask and cape. All right, so that's the yeah. Well, now we know what the two items were that he was missing. Yep, mask and the cape, and they go to fight the evil cousin. That doesn't that, go very well. That doesn't even last long. <laughs> no, he zaps him with a laser just after Goslin says the ship's indestructible. He vaporizes the thunderquack. They all drop from the sky, and where do they land? Coca Cola. In a big vat of Coca Cola. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here comes that really weird Sun Wu animation I talked about. This next scene is they have to figure out how to kill off a main character who's also a child and make it funny. Okay, that must have been tough. They do this in two ways. Okay, first of all, the animation's insane. They have Goslin with this big, swollen stomach. She looks pregnant. And they lay her on the ground, and the animation is so strange. The characters are drawn all wrong. It's just, it looks it looks bad, but it's still, it's bad enough to be funny. But what they keep doing is she keeps dying and coming back to life. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think she does that three times. She dies, she comes back. She dies, she comes back. The last time she dies, they stand there looking at her. Mm-hmm. And Darkwing goes, she's gone. And Launchpad goes, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, so she, she is dead. They actually pulled off a death scene. Um, it is not in continuity with the show. You're right. But it's still, you know, it's a delicate subject matter to show Goslin dying. Mm-hmm. Uh, very Yoda-ish, you know? Yeah. And she passes the mantle over to Darkwing. He's the new hero in town. So he has to fight his evil cousin. Yeah. But now we and, go, we get a cut scene, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we get uh, Goss and Honk in the future. Yeah, Honker's crying. Yeah, and, and Honk. They're, They're both, both crying. crying. Yeah. 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 So what happens after that? Well, we go. We have another cutscene. 
They yeah, go back Darkwing to, is... go back to the uh, the to the Bay Bridge. And, and he's uh, in the hideout, yeah, trying to like figure out like what he stands against. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Two things he's against is skullduggery, you know, can't forget skullduggery, and mm-hmm. bad grammar. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the cousin comes back. He's destroying and... the city. He's tearing it up this time. He's not playing around. Oh, you know what? One thing I did like, they remember back in Darkly Dawns of the Duck Part 2, we really were impressed by that red sky outside the bridge. Mm-hmm. They do that again here. Looks yeah. really cool. Um, so they fight the evil cousin. Uh, Darkwing tells Launchpad to get right up to the ship. What does Launchpad do? <laughs> uh, he sends him up there, though, doesn't he? Well, Launchpad plows right into the ship with a yeah. thunderclap. Yeah, he, he and, runs right into it, like crashes. So it's time for Darkwing to use all the things that other people said could come in handy one day. Yeah, because he realized, yeah, he realizes he doesn't know how to fight crying. <laughs> no, never done it before. Mm-hmm. So one by one, he remembers in a thought bubble other characters saying it could come in handy someday. So he shows up in a cloud of smoke, and we get an entrance line. He says, I am the hero that every culture and every world needs. And even the evil cousin's impressed. He goes, that is an entrance. Um, so he uses the entrance with the smoke. He, he did what Goslin told him. He looks dangerous. Pulls out the gas gun like his father told him to use. And then uses karate like the sensei told him. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, he kicks Negaduck's butt. Really easy. Did you notice Neg... Uh, I don't, I'm not calling him Negaduck. Did you notice I the know. evil cousin's gun? Yeah, he has a gun similar to the gas gun, too. Y- yeah. Negaduck it kind of looked, like a, kinda looked a... like a ray gun or something. Yeah, Negaduck never used a gun. He's now not he... Negaduck. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> what I think happened is they had this great story. They had the Superman origin. Mm-hmm. They needed a villain, and someone just said, "We got Negaduck. Yeah. Put him in there." This is not a Negaduck episode. Like mm-hmm. I barely count it. Okay, it's, it's I, better, I don't count. It's, it. it's better because he's in it. It's a little bit better because he's in it. Yeah, but it's not. My favorite bit with this quote-unquote Negaduck is when Darkwing's about to kick his butt, mm-hmm. and Negaduck starts begging for mercy. Mm-hmm. He goes, you know, I was only kidding around like we used to in the old days. And then you, then you hear a tiny little please before Darkwing kicks his butt. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we get one last appearance from the mysterious Master Avenger. She shows up in his thought bu- bubble and goes, good job, Darkwing. Oh, <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> and so our story is over. Yeah, we go back to the future and... Goss and Hulk. Oh, you said Back to the Future. Oh, I sure did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we get Goss and Hulk, and they're awakened. They're awakened by the yeah. museum tour guy. It's, it's daytime now. Mm-hmm. And they mention the janitor, and the museum museum tour guide says, what janitor? We haven't had a janitor in 50 years. Yep. And then uh, he notices Hulk is blowing his nose with a purple handkerchief, but it's not really a handkerchief, Mike. He picks it up and realizes something. Yep, it's the missing artifact that they needed for the Darkwing, man. He, he, holds up, he holds it up in front of his face in a way that you can still see his eyes in the eye holes of the mask. Mm-hmm. And yet it's Darkwing's mask. So he turns around to the mannequin. He puts it on the mannequin and you hear Darkwing say, thanks. <laughs> and then he passes out from shock, the museum mm-hmm. guy. And, uh, you know... You know, Gazatron, Gaz, whatever her name is, Gazaloid. She's like, oh, well, he was a myth, huh? And Honker's last line is great. Honker goes, well, I suppose every myth has some basis in reality. Mm-hmm. And um, great last line. And we end on a we end on a shot of the mannequin, fully clothed now, with the mask and everything. Mm-hmm. Good ending. I like the ending. Um, so I think we should rate the episode. All right, let's go for it. Well, how many gas guns are you giving it? Because I, I got a feeling uh, I have an idea what you're going to score it. I'm giving it a three. Okay. Which, it's a little better than average. Um, I like the episode just because they were daring enough to do something really different. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's like, it's like what they were doing is like, oh, here's Darkwing Duck's origin. <laughs> just kidding. No, it's not. Here's this <laughs> nonsense. You know, mm-hmm. and I've heard people complain like this isn't his origin. I want to see his origin. I don't. I mean, I don't care very much. If Tat Stones doesn't care, I don't care. I just think it's funny that they were they were able to do something so so nuts with this show. Mm-hmm. Not all of it works, but what does work is fun. Um, it's not really Negaduck, but he kind of helps the episode. 
The um, it could come in handy someday. Runner is funny. Um, Herb is great. Always fun to see Herb. The Superman references are clever, especially the Brando stuff. And even the Kung Fu stuff, you have to be older to get those jokes. And, you know, Doctor Strange and all of that. It's a very superhero-inspired show. Definitely something all the people who, did, who worked on this series loved. You know, I'll give it a three. It's not a, a high score, but I think it's fair. How mm-hmm. about you? Okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to get... No, no, no. I'm not going to give it a bad score, but it's not as high as yours either. I'm giving it a two, Mike. Um the the reason why I'm giving it a two is I like certain things. You name some of the things I like, but then I, I kind of feel like they went too much into the Superman origin. They went too much into whatever uh, Batman or Kung Fu. It, it kind of like uh, I, I I get that's what they were doing. They were doing parodies. I get that, but like you know, it, it does kind of mess with the continuity of the, of the show. Even though you said Tastone never cared about continuity. It's just it, none of this stuff, stuff is ever referenced back. I do I'll, like I'll, that, I'll, that, not to interrupt, but I'll take this over Darkwing to Bloom. Oh God, Let, let's <laughs> save that one for another day. All right. Um, <laughs> um, I do like the evil cousin. Uh, I do like how the scenes with uh, the parents uh, fighting over the spaceship, and then the, the baby is the one that wins. I, I thought that was hilarious. Uh, you know, like you said, like Herb is great, but like the Goslin death scene, I thought it was a little too much. Like, come on, let's just end the scene already, you know? It it does drag, but like <laughs> I said, Launchpad going, are you sure? Definitely pays off. But yeah, I, I, I see your point. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm trying to like really handpick this episode, why I don't like it as much. To me, it's like, it's okay to watch it. But will I ever go back to it? Probably not, unless I'm just going through all the episodes again. You know, it's not one I care for. It's not one I'm going to recommend to people. Um, I do get his point, though. You know, it gets, it does get, this is where I'm going to say something good about it. I do think it's an episode that gets you away from the, the the regular episodes of Darkwing. You know, if you need a break from that. You know, like when you watch it in shows, for, you know, you're going straight through, whether it's Stargate SG-1 or yeah. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> You need an episode. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, you're excused. Yeah, you need an episode from time to time to just get you away from the normal, to give you a break. And this episode kind of does that. So that's where this episode works, you know? You uh, know? If this one had aired as part of the 13 ABC episodes, I would have been like, oh, come on, this feels like filler. But but amongst all the other 65 episodes from the Disney afternoon, mm-hmm. it's 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 fun. To, you, in the moment, it's entertaining. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm entertained in some parts. Some parts just really drag to me. But like I said, I, I'm I'm a two. I don't hate this episode. I don't love it. It's okay. okay. I, I can do it. All right. Uh, do we have any villain to raid or anything? No, we're saving the real Negaduck for an actual Negaduck episode. Okay. As an evil cousin, not Negaduck, I'll give him a three and a half. He, I that. mean, he he barely gets off the the the, the um the seat in his spaceship. He barely gets off the seat. You know. Mm-hmm. He gets almost. He gets very little screen time. I yeah. I always forget how little screen time he actually gets. Remember, this is not my naked duck rating, guys. This is the evil cousin. No, <laughs> we, you know what? We'll we'll give you a little hint. The next time we see naked duck, we'll rate him. Okay. All right. So, Mike, man, what episode we got next? Do you miss Megavolt? Actually, I do a little bit. I yeah. miss Megavolt too. Um. So you know what? He's in the next episode. And Gizmo Duck. Oh, I know um, you're excited about that. Yeah, so the next episode is Up, Up, and Awry. It's got mm-hmm. Megavolt, Gizmoduck, and Kennedy Cartoons. Okay. Um, speaking of Kennedy Cartoons, we have a special guest in this episode. We, um, you know, all goes well, knock on wood. We haven't recorded it yet. But our next episode, we are going to be joined by one of the animators from Kennedy Cartoons. Okay. Um, his name is Derek Bond. He'll be joining us for that episode. He'll be telling us a bit about his work on Darkwing and with Kennedy Cartoons. So join us for that one. Mm -hmm. And that wraps up the secret origins of Darkwing Duck. Yeah, man. Uh, Guys, make sure y'all follow us on Facebook. Make sure you're following us on Instagram, on Twitter, and our YouTube. Uh, We just did a giveaway on Facebook. By the time this one airs, uh, the Instagram one will probably be over. So YouTube and Twitter will probably be next by then. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you guys keep following us, and uh, remember, stay dangerous. It could come in handy someday.
<laughs> Y'all have a good night. Good night.